Okay. Yep. You found me again. Darn it. I'm back. Doing a reaction video. Forza Motorsports. I don't know. Why am I holding my controller? I'm not even playing games. I was sitting on my lap for a while. Forza Motorsports. Uh, official accessibility features overview. I have no idea what this is. It's six minutes. Bear with me. Hopefully it's good. You know what to do down below. You know I like it. Thanks for hanging out with me. I appreciate you letting me be creative. So here we go. You know how it goes. One, two, three, go. The biggest challenge was overcoming the natural barrier that already exists between blind people and racing, mm. uh, blind people and driving. I, I'm one of those people, you know, I've never driven a vehicle. I've, I've been blind all my life. So Forza is a triple A simulation racing style game. I will fully admit that it took me a while to notice that I was no longer crashing all the time, that I would spend a long time not going off track. I wanted to just shatter that barrier, break through that ceiling, and say, no, you can control this this vehicle. This is your road now. Welcome to Forza. What? This is cool. Blind driving assistant. My name is Brandon Cole. I'm a professional accessibility consultant, uh, specifically a totally blind accessibility consultant. The basic description of what I do is I work directly with video game developers to take a look at their game and then help them turn that into an experience that is accessible to the totally blind uh, so they can have at least equivalent experiences to that of the sighted. Wow. There, there's there's definitely a lot of challenges uh, with working on a racing game. Most blind people have been in vehicles but have never driven one. That's who we have to design for. We have to design for people that, again, have never played, maybe never played a racing game before. Wow, the game looks beautiful. We decided that we, we wanted to make this the most accessible Forza yet. I'm Neha Chintella. I'm a gameplay and accessibility Neha. over on Forza Motorsport. That's a dope Forza name. Studios. I won't say that it's been, an, it's been an easy process. There's always an uphill battle to fight. We're trying to do things that no one has ever done before. And we are trying to balance that with all the other gameplay priorities. We really wanted to focus on just accessibility overall for our title and leverage all the tools and resources we had on our plate so that we could take this just to the next level. We really believed in the really quick. commitment of we could take this just to the next level. Does all the tools and resources every studio for Microsoft have a couch and a TV in like their office? The Starfield did the same thing. I mean, they did. I was just silly though. You know, I'm... <laughs> so that we could take this just to the next level. We really believed in the, the sentiment of working with our community um, from the very beginning. The idea was that we wanted to bring the racing experience to the blind player. I'm Todd Helsley. I'm the senior sound supervisor for Forza Motorsport. Hey, Todd. It's a simulation racing game, and so that means you're supposed to stay on track in between these sometimes very tight lines. You're trying to get around the track as fast as possible. So we knew from the get-go, we did not want to try to make this ourselves with the assumption that we were doing it correctly. So we brought in Brandon Cole, we got him integrated into the pipeline. And did I say that hi to Brandon? Kind of every once in a while. Hi, Brandon. I, I forgot. Into the process. What I love about working with Brandon is he's, is he's very candid in his feedback. So he will tell you right away if something's not working. Very close to being off track there, but I wasn't. I was there. Okay. <laughs> Spoke too soon. As we were going through week to week and making kind of some incremental progress, but it still felt like it was still up in the air. And um, Brandon was making his, trying to make his way around the track and we made a change and we, we noticed, we were like, wait, he's, he's staying on the line. He's following this turn really, really well. And Brandon came back and he was like, wait. Is, wait, is it happening? You, is this really you are, happening right You are now? perfect yeah, right now. You're driving. You're perfect. Yeah. Oh, look at this turn, Brandon. Huh. When it did happen at the same time, it was out of the blue. But I remember just genuinely being baffled at first, like, wait a minute, I'm not going off track. Wait a minute, I just made that turn. To get to a point where you're not crashing all the time, it felt it felt like the 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 gap had been bridged. That was that was that was a real, you know, I, I talk about accessibility being breaking barriers. And that I think is the the point where the barrier broke. And we cruise to the end of the lap. Woo! Ooh. Even watching Brandon go on the track for the very first time was a sight to see. Knowing that we had been able to make something that we had thought impossible possible um, was very cool. I think the centerpiece. How are you doing it? Is it just audio? We'll pan your car engine noise and your tire sounds to either left or right based on the direction you have to turn. 
Oh. There is our track limit cues, which gives you a kind of a, a beeping alert that lets you know you're nearing the edge of the track. Not necessarily that you're on it all the time. It's not a bad thing to be on the edge of the track all the time. Sometimes you have to be on the edge of the track. Sound design is huge, especially in the blind space. I mean, you can't see, you can hear. The more information we can give the player, whether it's how fast you're going, what direction you need to go, it's completely new to the driving experience for any game, really. There's just so many features that combine together, and that's the thing. It's an amalgamation of, of, of a bunch of features that together make it blind accessible to us. I truly believe that we have a system that works. And in my shoes right now playing this game, it is fun to race around the track. If we have other cars on track, it's fun to pass them up and, and hear that little acknowledgement that we did. I can honestly say that I've gotten first place in a race against AI opponents, and that felt fantastic. Mm. With our blind driving assist, That's awesome. because we have such a large suite of different cues that players may have never used before, there will be an experience of getting to know each of them and figuring out what works for you. Yeah, of course. I genuinely believe that everything is learnable. My encouragement to the blind community was give yourself time. It may not go exactly as you want it to at first, but you can learn the tracks based on the cues we have here. It might take a lot of learning to get there, but it, it really does work. Huh. Hey, other blind person, I offer you control. I offer you the opportunity to get into a vehicle of your choice, pick the track of your choice, and once you're on that track, the ability to drive it yourself, to take those turns at high speeds yourself, to go down those straightaways at high speeds yourself, to have full control over which direction you're steering, when you're braking, all of that I offer to you to do yourself. This is bringing the AAA racing genre to the blind community to the fullest. That's super cool. All right. Blind driving assist. That's cool. Well, thanks for hanging out. I'll see if I upload this one or not. I'll probably get copyright dinged or something like I do on some other videos. They don't like me sharing this with you, letting you know that there's an opportunity for blind driving in Forza Motorsports or all these other movies. So it's it's interesting how YouTube and these big corporations work. Because I'm usually not that negative, but that's okay. Thanks for hanging out. Have a great week.